Hi, I'm Justin Miller from Wowza Media Systems, and we're here with Tim Doherty. Tim, how's it going? Hey, Justin, doing good. Well, today we are going to talk about APIs, specifically the REST API for Wowza Streaming Engine. Um, now, Tim, I know this is an important topic for us. We don't often get into the weeds like this where we take a deep dive into Wowza Streaming Engine and kind of look under the hood and figure out some of the more important aspects and all right, I'm going to call them more important aspects. Not sure if you feel that way, but quite honestly, one of the greatest things about Wowza Streaming Engine is our ability to control it via the REST API. And it's one of the things we talk about the least. That's right. Um, it, it, it's, it's the ability to bolt a whole other application onto a streaming server and Wowza can take all these commands and do a variety of functions in the background so that someone like me who's not a developer or someone who is a developer can get a little more advanced but not have to write their own deep level streaming application. So it's a, it's a really cool way to control Wowza streaming engine. One thing that I've noticed around some of the senior engineers and integrators with Wowza is they really like to brag about not having to use the manager, which is the uh, graphic user interface. I think it's a great um, tool for people that are learning Wowza streaming engine, but this, what we're doing today effectively would give you the ability to remotely send commands to Wowza Streaming Engine without using the manager at all. So it's kind of an advanced way. And it, to say we're in the weeds is accurate. And I'm in the weeds. I, I you know, I, again, I'm not a developer, but I love to hook things up together. So you'll kind of see how just anybody can come in, take a look at the API and, and you know, get Wowza to do stuff for them. So that's right. kind of my approach, Justin. I think it's great because I know that other companies that are using us on their back end, they can create their own user interfaces that are simpler and can uh, make sure that then their clients can achieve the things that they need to do uh, using engine, just start, such as uh, start and uh, stopping streams, uh, just some of the basic level stuff that's, uh, or even more so maybe there's more detailed stuff. Cause honestly, I don't know a lot yeah. about our API and all its capabilities. And uh, while I know, we're going to be showing some of this just on a more basic level. We're not creating GUI interfaces here. We're just going to be doing it from a terminal so people can see it uh, at the most simplistic level of, of executing a command. Um, but I know that things can start at that point and then become like graphic user interfaces specific to a uh, company that might brand it under their own name. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And that's that's the whole idea is to to get in and just demonstrate very simply using curl commands that Wowza's REST API is is available and it's something that you can hopefully take advantage of. And to to kind of note on, you know, using a, a, a GUI, this is Wowza Streaming Engine Manager. Uh, most Wowza users are very familiar with this. This actually is a uh, application that uses the very REST API that we're talking about today. So right now you see the developers APIs and SDKs page. We've got a variety of information there. I want to focus in on Wowza streaming engine. So I'm going to actually click on that. And this is intended as an orientation, kind of a starting point for people that want to use this API. And we tried to make it really cool. You know, we got an overview, which talks about, um, authentication, which is an important aspect, setting up your Wowza server properly on the right port, um, using the right type of uh, authentication, digest or no authentication if you feel safe and you're behind a firewall. We're not going to get lost in that world of actually setting up the API today. This is intended to be a little more brief. We're just going to go through a couple examples. So if you want to learn how to set it up, you have this overview. Um, you know, there's a few examples here, and then there's the the actual reference to the whole REST API. So I want to, if it's all right with you, Justin, I want to go through a couple examples here that I think are real world applicable. Um, you know, if, if just browsing this store here, you can see that um, there, there, there are a few articles. Um, you, you see that I see SMIL jump off the page. I see statistics jump off the page. Um, Again, these point to some some common API commands. Uh, for example, people like to see how many users are connected to a server or how hard a server is using. There's a variety of statistics you can pull for. Today, right. I want to go in and I want to create a stream file. 
because a stream file is used to connect to an R RTSP camera, like an IP camera. So I'm going to create a stream file that goes to an RTSP stream. I'm going to connect that stream file using the API. So I, I create it. The next command is connect it. So it, it basically tells Wowza, hey, IP camera, I'm going to stream from you now. And it pulls the stream in. Then I'm going to turn a recorder on that, that stream that I just created. We'll record it for, for 30 seconds or a minute or so, stop the recording, and then stop the stream. So just a few API commands. And I think you'll see just in this process um, a, a real simple way to digest the example and then test it. You got to modify it and then test it and see how it works. So, Justin, that's kind of my approach. What do you All think? Right. Yeah, no, no, that sounds great. I, I definitely have a question for you right now. Sure, though. sure. Now, I'm familiar with in Wowza Streaming Cloud, our service, we do stop and or rather start and stop streams uh, regularly. Uh, but uh, Wowza Streaming Engine is always running because it's your, your own service unless you choose to spin it down for whatever reason. Uh, you had mentioned stopping uh, the the stream and I, I was curious are you talking about stopping or are you talking about disconnecting it because it is uh, using uh, RTSP I appreciate the clarification um, it's connecting the stream file and then we're going to disconnect the stream file so starting and stopping um, I you know it, it's kind of just the start connect stop disconnect i'm using those terms interchangeably probably okay. should stay a little more on the connect and disconnect side because um, if it was if it was an rtmp stream we wouldn't be disconnecting no if it was an rtmp stream uh, you actually can go connect to an rtmp stream and you use the um, media caster type live repeater instead of media caster type rtp so you can do the same thing with rtmp as we're doing with rtsp um because the media caster has the ability to go get media. Oh, okay. um, but in most cases, an RTMP stream is pushed to Wowza. So you wouldn't need a stream file to connect and disconnect to it. So yeah, I think a good, a good assumption here is that, you know, in this, in these examples, we'll be connecting to an RTMP camera, RTSP okay. camera. Sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, I love IP cameras, so let's check this out. I'm excited. All right, cool. So I just, I have this tab open. Um, this is the article right here, create and manage stream files. I have it right here. And I'm going to, first of all, create a stream file. So I'm going to scroll down. Um, and, and, you know, I'll be honest with you. I just kind of look through these articles, like get a list of stream files. I don't need that. Add a stream file. Oh, that's what I need. Add a stream file. So I'm really rough and tumble. I'll just take this code right here and copy it. So this little blurb here will copy it to the clipboard. And then I will switch over to my editor. You should see my editor come up on the stream. Yeah. And then I, I have, I've done this previously. So I wanted to be ready for our session today. But if I paste that, um, that's under connect, sorry. There's create a stream file. So there's my code that's already been modified and then I just pasted this. So you can see when you're pulling stuff from the example, it's going to localhost, which that's if Wowza was running on my local machine, which it isn't. Um, and then it has some generic information here. Now down here, the command that I modified, um, I entered the IP address of the server, which is uh, an adjacent server on my desk here. Um, I confirm the application, which is live. And then I created a name for the stream file called drone live. And then I put the actual RTSP link to that stream. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go over to my text or excuse me, my terminal. So you should see the terminal. I'm going to paste it and I hit enter and you can see very quickly that it says success true message. And so it's basically Wowza saying the stream is working. So because I want the cause and effect, I'm actually going to go back over to Wowza Streaming Engine Manager. And I'm going to go to Applications and Live and Incoming Streams. And you can see that the stream file has been created. I was getting ahead of myself. So you can see the drone live stream that I just created with this information is here. So if I switch back to my editor, you can see you know, there's the IP address for the RTSP and there's the name. I just created that and you can see it, of 
course right here. So that's kind of a cool cause and effect. Um, now the next thing I want to do is connect the stream. So I've added the stream file and now I want to, you know, update would be if I needed to change the IP address or some properties in there, I'm just going to skip that for now. It's too advanced, not much fun. Um, and I just want to connect the stream file. So again, I'm going to take this and copy it, go back over to my editor. And this is where it, yeah, I was earlier, connect a stream file and I pasted it. So again, here we are in the editor and we're trying to determine, all right, I just pasted this from the example, but I need this to work in my server. So these are default things, um, the, the accept and the content header. So those are generic. They're pretty much the same for every API call, but these URLs are very loaded. There's a lot of information here. So again, I've, I've got to have the correct IP address, which used to be localhost, which I know is right. And then in most states, default server, default vhost can stay the same as the example, but live, in case you're using a non-default application like Tim's awesome stream or Justin's Naturescapes. Um, you can have, you know, your application name, and then you also have to make sure that the stream name itself is correct. So um, Drone Live is the actual stream name. And one thing that's kind of interesting is when you disconnect, you don't have to include the dot stream in there. You just just include the drone live and that's implied in the example. So anyway, talking too much here, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this stream copy no definitely good information to know that that entire url is necessary oh very definitely so i'm going to paste it in as a curl command here in the terminal so now you can see that it says publish stream successfully started which is good news right so we'll go back to chrome I just went off the success true. That was <laughs> success true. That was my works notification. Well. <laughs> it's a good feeling when you actually have success true with these APIs because there is a little bit of um, trial and error, trial and error. So I'm going to refresh the incoming streams, and you can see that the drone line stream is now connected. If I click on it, you can see that there's data coming in, and I even have a player over here from Theo Player, and I can start playing the stream over here. So I've actually connected it, which is cool. Let's let that play. And then am I going too fast or do you want to record it? No, too, no, Justin? that's, that's, uh, that's great information here. Okay. Um, I am, I, I'm, I was actually kind of surprised that, uh, you could use Theo player. I'm curious. Is that cause you're on a local system right now, correct? I am. That's right. And the way I did that is see this streamlock.net domain. Mm -hmm. Um, I created a SSL certificate that points to that 10.0.9 or 1.9, that, that local IP, so that I can do HTTPS between my servers locally. Because I like to use all these cool browser tools and you can't have HTTP mixed with HTTPS. So right. yeah, that's kind of the sidebar, but yeah, that's that's how we're doing it. No, good to know, good to know, because I think <laughs> a lot of people have that issue. They're, they're trying to test using something like Theo Player and they're unable to um, because they're, they're running it on a local system. Yeah, that can be that can be somewhat frustrating, but I do a I do a fair amount of um, testing and proof of concept with with our customers, and so when I do that, I really like you know to have everything secure and for it to look kind of buttoned down. But that's just me being OCD a little bit. So yeah, that one's free. Okay. Um, let's record this stream, Justin. So we're, we're still right, working. Yeah. Yeah, we're still working through this this document on stream files with the API. We're going to come back and disconnect later. But over here, this other article, which I believe was linked here, which is create and manage stream recorders. So that's this article right here. And basically what I want to do is create a recorder. So I just clicked on that. It, it zoomed me down to, um, let's see, it looks like the, the anchor was off a little bit. Let's get a list of recorders, create a recorder. So recorder is Wowza recording a stream. And there, there can be a lot of information involved with it. This is the command right here. And it looks kind of intimidating, to be honest. And at a face lot of value, details. Yeah. And, and honestly, it, you know, as just a, a, an integrator at face value, when you start seeing all these um, parameters, it can get really intimidating. Don't be intimidated by it. It's really no big deal. You're sending a URL to your Wowza server get in, get your hands dirty and mess with it. So I'm going to copy that text and I'm going to move over to my editor. 
um, and you can see that I've tested this before, so I know that this works, but I want to kind of um, do a comparison. So I'm going to open up a couple lines here and paste that code example. So this is the code example. There's local host, live, you know, stream recorder. It's going to try to record my stream, which doesn't exist because I have drone live dot stream. So some of the, um, the key data points in here are, first of all, the IP address. You want to update that. Um, we're still using application live, so application slash live, and then the stream recorder is is named after the stream. So I, I created this earlier, drone live dot stream, and see that capital L, that'll get you. So it's drone capital live dot stream. So my URL is good, and there's a whole bunch of information in here that you can use if you want. Um, so for example, I, I you know, I'm, I'm telling the recorder to be called drone live dot stream. I actually think it would if it was left blank, like it is in this example up here. Oh, it, it wasn't blank. So the, the example has the stream name being inserted as the recorder name. So that right. one I changed. But there's like a base file name, which I left blank. I think you can change that. Start time. There's there's You can experiment with a whole bunch of different settings here. But again, I'm just trying to do a straight demo with everybody. I've, I All I did was update the recorder name. I'm going to copy this whole block here. Can you scroll up for one second though Absolutely. for me so I can just what compare with the other one? Well, I'm just noticing, just like you're stating, there's many things that don't have information put in like recording start time, mm -hmm. but we have like key, uh, start on key frame is true, move first video frame to zero is false. So it seems like there are quite a number of things that already have specific information placed in. The only thing that I see that you've really changed is, uh, is that, recorder name right yes, that's right and okay. and I, again i just figured that out on my own okay. um I, I don't know if there's a how-to article on what you need to and not need to place in recorder okay. name but and i mean it gets, it's good to know for people that the url at the top and then that recorder name is probably the the only two things you'll need to change at least in this initial test that's correct and and i want to emphasize justin it's it's really important to not be intimidated by this to, to make mistakes, use a system that's not in production, and just kind of go through the, the struggle of figuring all this out. Because you're right, some of this stuff is pre-populated, and that's probably based on best practices. So in my case, again, I just want this thing to work. So I just want to be able to start that recording. I'm going to take this big block of text, which seems excessive. Um, and just real quick, I'm going to switch back over to Chrome for a minute. I want to show you something. Um, so if I if I go back out to my incoming streams and refresh it, you can see that these are, you know, if I wanted to, I could press that red button to start recording. So it's in a non-recording state. Um, switch over to terminal. Let me clear the screen for you. But it's good to see that we have that GUI interface. You can see we've already created this basically using the same system uh, for the manager. And here you are now showing how to do it with the API. That's exactly correct. So I'm gonna press enter. And it says, to your point earlier, success true. That's a good feeling. <laughs> um, recorder created. And if I switch back to Chrome and refresh, you can see that the recorder is created. Probably can't see this too good in the screen recording, but it's actually telling you the directory where it's actually being recorded. So um, now we're recording the stream, which right. is exciting. The recording right? in progress is definitely the good status, right? That, that's, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's the good status. So once you start a recording, what's the next logical step, Justin? What do you think? I, I think it would be, well, I would say stop the recording. Um, you might be doing pause the recording. I'm not sure. Now well, I'm not going to get that me. detailed, but to the API <laughs> and the live recording um, component in Wowza, you can split the recording, segment the recording. Um, there, if, if you look up the article on how to record streams with Wowza Streaming Engine, there, there's a nice set of options. Okay, Again, but today, that being said, as we're talking about it here, you can see them directly through our own manager that we have it. We have the stop, you have the split, right? That that uh, line with the three dots on it. Yeah, this is the, the manager version of it. So oh, okay. the file name, the path, these are all configurable in that API. Okay. Um, you know, I was specifically looking at the uh, for if you can escape out of this for a second for sure. for drone live that you created. If you look under actions, I mean, we mm -hmm. have the big black box for stop, and then right next oh, to it, I assume right. yes. we have that split recording. So all the 
all the API calls you're talking about, you can see that we have the capability here. Therefore, we must have an API call available for it. That's an excellent observation. I'm glad that came up. Pretty much everything you see in the WASA manager can be duplicated with the API. Um, towards the end, I'll go over this briefly, but this is this is the list of API commands in its raw form, and there's a lot there. Right. And to uh, your point, you, when you went in and brought up that other window, you were showing that these are changes that can be made through uh, Manager, but you could also make them through the API. Definitely. But I'm going to step back into, I'm just a regular guy trying to learn this API. Um, I want to stop it and I don't know how. I know I have a cool button in my GUI, but I want I want to be able to do it through a cron job or I want my application to be able to send a webhook. So I'm going to go back to this manage recorders and I'm like, okay, create a recorder, split a recording. Oh, that's kind of a cool thing, but I don't really need that right now. Oh, stop a recording. We have a winner right here. So again, I'm gonna I'm just gonna copy that block of text, go back to my editor. And I already set one up before, but again, it's that same dance, right? Where you um, you make sure the IP is updated and I've got the application name and then the stream recorder was called dronelive.stream. So um, I was a little bit mistaken earlier. I think I said disconnect when, when I was talking about um, when you start a recording you 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 only have to have oh no i've got that right i'm i just scratch that from the record everybody sometimes you'll see in the example that it's referring to a dot stream file and sometimes you'll see that it's just referring to the name of the stream file so just be sensitive to that in the example if the example you're dealing with a stream file doesn't include the dot stream um, example then you don't have to put it in there um, pardon the confusion so to stop recording a live stream, I've got localhost. Um, I'm going to switch it from, instead of my stream, it'll be dronelive.stream, and this should stop the recording. So I'm going to grab this, uh, go back over to my terminal, and I'll clear the terminal, and we'll paste it. You can see that it's exactly what I had in the text file. Recording stopped. And if I go over to Chrome, should see that the recording, which was previously in this state, now is stopped. So I've successfully connected the stream file, recorded the stream file, stopped the recording. So I'm kind of struggling through it, Justin. No, you're doing great. I'm, I'm learning a lot while you're doing it. So let's do the final thing. Let's disconnect that stream. So we'll go back to the managing stream files article. Disconnect a stream file. Okay. So... We do what I've been doing the whole time. Copy it, compare it. Oh, that's not right. I did something wrong. Copy that block, paste that block. There it is. So IP address, right? We've got that loaded. Um, We're still seeing the same screen. I don't think you've switched screens. From oh, the, sorry uh, about that. No there problem. we go. There we go. Thanks for catching me up. So I just pasted this from the code example. And then this is my um, updated version. So I've got the IP address updated. And then I've got the application name updated. And then the drone live.stream. So it looks like this API call is clean. And again, do this in a text editor because if you're doing it in the terminal, it gets really messy. So I'll switch over to terminal. I won't forget this time. And again, we're gonna we're gonna go to that IP. I noticed what you were talking about here, where it showed credence.stream to let you know that you needed that dot stream at the end. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a true working example. I've just seen a couple commands where, I don't know if it's disconnecting the stream. No, it wouldn't be disconnecting. Where, where one of them, it doesn't, you don't have to have the dot stream file, but the other ones you do. So it could be developer A did this one and developer B did this one. Just be, just be mindful of that nuance. So I'm going to hit enter here. Publish stream successfully stopped. That means it's disconnected from the IP camera. And we can go back to um, Chrome. And just because I really like the cause and effect, you can see that the stream is gone. And um, we've gone through through that particular cycle. So how am I doing, Justin? Are, are you getting a good idea? Yeah, a little no, bit of an absolutely. idea? <laughs> OK, cool. Um, and, and again, you know, I, I wanted to be transparent. When, when I'm working with the API, I like to just 
scroll through these documents and I like to test the example code and I like to try things myself. Um, if you're if you're a more advanced developer and you're more um, experienced with API programming, uh, we have quite a variety of options with Wowza Streaming Engine. Um, you know what we've been doing today was under the applications um, section where you can go through and um, like, for example, if I scroll down here, I'm looking at, at the um, URLs. I'm, gonna, I'm looking for the stream files. I can see this right here. Receive, retrieve a list of stream files. Um, if I just type in my live application and I hit try it out, you know, you can actually interact with the API in the Swagger documentation here. So you saw how easy that was, right? Um, if I want to um, add a stream file, I can I can do it right here in this example where you know app app name live. I might be getting a little bit into the weeds here, um, but you can you can actually define it right here. So let me do this really quick. See if I get this right. So I created a bogus uh, URL, and then the name of it would be. Tim's camera and I'll hit try it out it didn't work so you know I, I we don't have time in this demo but basically what I'm showing you is that you can go through and interact with the API here in the deeper documentation and as you can see with me kind of mumbling along here it's kind of fun mm -hmm. to see all the the different settings that you can get a hold of um no, absolutely. There's a lot of things that you can you can certainly test out to verify it works. And of course, I think one of the main things that you said right at the beginning when you were talking about testing it is don't test it on the production system. You really should have this somewhere where you can just try these things out, a little sandbox mode, as it were, uh, to just verify what you can and can't achieve. Uh, I, I, I get really excited when I see things like this because I think of it just from the perspective of say building an app you know you want things to be controlled from your phone these days and being able to do so requires something like the rest api oh definitely um you know just to kind of um cap you know kind of um just dive off of your uh you know use a production server versus a dev server dev versus production you know to set up the api you have to create authentication schemes um, you have to enable the documentation server um, in those documents that I was referring to earlier in Chrome, you know, I'm I, there, there's somewhat of a, a, a setup step here when, when you get the API working. So you have to open up ports. You have to kind of go through an iteration of just getting the API available. I think it's well documented, um, but we didn't go through those steps in this in this demo. So just wanted to call that out, Justin. Right, right. And definitely appreciate it. And thank you for joining me and talking about the REST API, Tim. Definitely appreciate it. For those people, uh, once again, who want to know more about some of our other options, not just for Wowza Streaming Engine, but for some of our other uh, products, definitely this is a great place to go. If you scroll up to developer APIs and SDKs there under wowza.com slash docs, that, this is the best place to start. And uh, definitely, as we said, take a deeper dive into our products. All right. Thanks again, Tim. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, Take Justin. Care. Bye now.